Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Wassalatu Wassalam ala Sayyidul Anbiya Al-Muhsalin, wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in, wa man ihtada bihadihi ila yawmiddini wa ba'd. All praise and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity yet again that we can bring some reminder from the hadith and the wordings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the blessed statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can take benefit from these and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that not only we take benefit but we can also have the understanding of it and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open and expand our heart that he can Please the blessing and he can please these words of advice into our heart. Rabbi Shuhli Sudri, we silly Amri, Wahl Ugdata Milli Sani Yafkahu Kauli, Allahumma la ilmalana illa ma alamtana inna kantar ali mun hakim. So this week our reminder is the sixteenth is the sixteenth hadith in the series which we have been doing from the forty hadith compilation from Imam Nawi Rahimahullah Ta'ala and this hadith is a very short hadith in comparison to many of the hadith that we did before. But point to be noted that nothing that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even though it may be just one or two words, but their meaning is vast and the meaning expands beyond what the words is. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself advised us and reminded us that he was given concise speech, but the meaning, the hikmah behind those speech is something which is vast and that is why centuries after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam scholars and mashayikh of ahadith are still until today to this very day going into the depths of ahadith and study ahadith merely by just not translation as we today that we claim that we, we are scholars or we study or we think that we read something online and we become the scholars but no scholars dwell and spend their life and decades of their life in the ahadith and science of ahadith. So this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was narrated by Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu. And as Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu he said, sorry, not Abdullah bin Abbas, this hadith is from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, as we did many ahadith, and he was a famous, one of the famous narrators of ahadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he narrated the most ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So again, yet we see another hadith narrated by that famous companion Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He said, "Anna rajulun qala li Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that a man said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, awsini. O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, advise me. Awsini, give me advice. Give me something that will benefit me. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied to him, qala la taqdab. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, don't become angry. Don't be angry. Then Faraddada Miran. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The man continued asking him the question numerous times. Some narrations said three times. Rasulullah the man asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the statement, the advice another time and another time. Awasini ya Rasulullah. Advise me, O Rasulullah. Advise me, O Rasulullah. So each time he asked the question, advise me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied him with the same answer in each case. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La taqdab. Don't become angry. Do not become angry. Don't become angry. So <clears throat> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the same answer even though the man asked the question numerous times more than once. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept his answer the same. Just two words. La, lam, uh, lam with the alif. And Rasulullah sallallahu said, taqdab. Don't become angry. La for negativity and taqlab, the, the verb of the of the sentence. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the man, that's just two words. Nothing extravagant, nothing big, nothing a long sentence. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La taqlab, don't become angry. And subhanAllah, the, the sahabas and the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their mind and the intellect was also such <coughs> That by the mere words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will get the understanding. They will understand and comprehend what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is putting over. And this same hadith which Imam Nawi rahimahullah recorded is from Imam Bukhari rahimahullah reported in the book of Imam Bukhari. But this same hadith, there is different wordings of this hadith is narrated by other scholars and compilers of hadith. And one of the other hadith by the compiler Imam Abu Dawud rahimahullah 
the wording of this hadith comes that a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to give him some words of advice that I can live by. Give me such advice that I can live by. But the advice that you were to give me, Ya Rasulullah, please make it so short or please make the advice so concise that it's not something that I can forget. Give me an advice I can live by, but not something long, which I may tend to forget, but something that is short and concise, something that may be very, um, very minute, so it's easy for me to remember throughout my life. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave his advice and told the person, told the man, that don't be angry. And then obviously the man repeated the question again, asking Rasulullah sallam, give me another advice that can, I can utilize throughout my life. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again, gave the famous, uh, the famous uh, advice and the famous answer as we talking about the hadith, La taqtab, don't become angry. So the point Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from all the narrations of this hadith, scholars have mentioned that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that this person, this individual that came to ask a question, he was a man that used to get angry very often. That he tend to lose his anger and whenever anyone would ask something or when anyone approach him, he was very, people were scared of him and people used to be afraid of him to approach him or maybe people used to be afraid to even have interactions with him because of his his hot tempered or because of his ill his ill mannered and because of his hot headed as we say. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him advice that Rasulullah sallam know this will be applicable and will be beneficial to him throughout his lifetime that he can implement this. But then whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave an advice it it is not something that's only for that time, but it's something Rasulullah SAW, subhanAllah, the blessings of his tongue and the wisdom that used to come out from the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the advice is something that can even be applicable throughout the time until the day of Qiyamah. Throughout the creation of mankind, from even after that individual, until today, until the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah, that is advice that is meant for every individual. That Rasulullah SAW said, La taqdab, don't become angry. And that is why we saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also give another advice that is general. That was not even in, uh, directly to one individual because of a question from that individual. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even give an advice in a hadith that Rasulullah sallam mentioned. Lay sa sharidu. Now Rasulullah sallam said that the strong person. Lay sa sharidu bi surah. إِنَّمَا الشَّرِيرُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ إِنَّ الْقَرَبُ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ That Rasulullah SAW said that a strong person is not one who indulge and one who can wrestle as well and one who overpowers someone in wrestling because of his strength. A strong person is one who can topple another person because of his strength. We know whenever we wrestle, and not, not the WWE that we have today, and not these TV shows, but wrestle as in real combat with one another, and not something that is act, but something that is physically done. So Rasulullah sallallahu said, Laysa sharidu bisura, that a shadid person, a strong person, a person in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the eyes of Islam, that will be strong is not someone that can overturn and overthrow and over and topple over another person because of his strength. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues, Innama sharid alladhi yamliku nafsahu in al but verily a strong person is one who can contain himself is one who can repress his anger. He repress himself when he is angry. He repress his anger. So Rasulullah SAW said that a strong man is not because of his strength and his power. As one advice, uh, one thing I will always, our one, a funny statement actually, I will always mention to my colleagues and friends and even my students that, you know, today we have the young generations that they try to be so active and they consider themselves active by going to the gym and lifting heavy weights, building big muscles. Alhamdulillah, they are good in their own ways. But that sad reality is that those same individual that try to get all his strength and all those muscles, when the time comes for Fajr Salah, and when the time comes to take off that blanket from their body, to get up to perform their Salah in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then all of the strength is gone. All of that strength is gone. So we see the real strength in that, series, in that instance, the real strength isn't the amount of weight and the amount of kilograms and, and pounds that you lift in the weight and the gym. But at the time of Fajr, that real strength is getting that blanket off you, especially in the time of winter. 
So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam telling us here that the real strength isn't the person, the real power isn't that person who can topple his opponent, who can overpower his enemy, but the real strength is the person who can suppress his anger, who can repress the anger, who can control his anger whenever he become hot headed or whenever he become hot tempered. That is a real strength of a person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred the qualities of the muttaqeen, those righteous ones, those God fearing ones, the ones who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alladina yunfikuna fi sarra'i wa dharra wal kathimin al qaida wal afin al nas. Wallahu yuhibbu al muhsinin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the ending of this verse, which we'll get to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even addresses those people as he, he loves the good doers, attributing them towards being good doers also. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the meaning of the verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the muttaqeen alladhina yunfikuna fi sarra'i wa dhallah they are those people who spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi sarra' in prosperity in ease for dhallah and in difficulty in adversity in times of difficult they also still spend they do not hold back their money and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and the muttaqeen also wal kathimin al qaid the muttaqeen are for those people that they repress their anger, they control their anger, they keep their anger in. They, and then Allah continues after that from the muttaqeen, wal afina al nas, nas, and they also pardon mankind. They also forgive the other man, the other man or the other human being who done, done them wrong. Wallahu yuhibbu al muhsinin, and Allah subhanahu wa taala mentioned. He loves the good doers, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the good doers. And in this quality of good doers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned there before, those that repress their anger. So this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is just substantiating what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already reminded us in the Quran. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exerting and give us an explanation of how we should suppress our anger, how we should keep our anger within and do not let it come out. You know, a statement, a sad statement actually, and a statement that is sometimes used in the, it is used mostly in the English terms, and it is used and they say, oh, the beast inside me is <clears throat> sleeping, it is not dead. And sometimes many people use this term uh, as a form that, you know, don't get me angry, that I may be quiet now, so the beast inside of me is still asleep. Don't make it awake, don't make it become awakened. That when you become awakened, you're trying to say that you'll get angry. But it is not a quality of a Muslim to show his anger. In fact, a quality of a Muslim, a quality of a muttaqeen and the al muhsineen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves is those that repress their anger. So we all need to be from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. We all want to be from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. We all want to be from the good doers. And most importantly, we all need to be from the muttaqeen. Here come, here go. We always hear the verses. There are many verses in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address us. Ya ayyuladheena amanu attaqullah. That we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every week in the Jum'ah khutbah, we hear the Imam, the imam recited towards us. Ya ayyuladheena amanu attaqullah. Haqqa tuqatihi. Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in various places referring to Ya ayyuladheena amanu all those who believe. Ittaqullah. You fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Become muttaqeen. We fast in the month of Ramadan so that we can become muttaqeen. We can become conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a real quality that we need to have. And the main purpose and one of the main way of achieving that quality is suppressing and repressing our anger whenever our anger comes. And for this, we need to make ourselves in such company. Keep ourselves occupied away from things that can make us become angry that can raise our anger. Yes, it is a nature of mankind. Don't say, oh, because I'm talking about anger, we shouldn't have anger, so which means something not part of us. It is part of us. That is why we got the advice. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran about it. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us about it. Not because it is something that we are free from. No, in fact, it is a quality of insan. It is a quality of mankind that we need to control, just as we have our nafs, we have our desires, we have to control it. Similarly, the anger is something we have to control also. And for us to be able to do this, we need to look into ourselves, we need to retrospect into ourselves and ask ourselves every time we get angry, what made us? What made me angry? What is the reason that caused me angry? We question ourselves regarding to this, that we can know, we can point out 
the defect that we have within ourselves that okay a point a this is what made me angry then you look at the solution how we can utilize how we can turn away from it and each and every one of us individually we know what some what is a thing or what kind of event or what problem is it that caused us to become angry and we need to be able to overcome that anger we need to turn that around that we avoid such things such situation that can make our anger override us and instead we overcome such a situation and as muslim to be able to overcome any such anger rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam give us an advice that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that he know of such a word seeing such a word that will cause a man to relax and rasulullah sallam out of his statement and mentioned this hadith when he saw a companion was becoming angry and rasulullah sallam said that i know of such a word that if you were to recite it you will become relaxed, you will become calm, and you become itmi'nan, peace and contentment. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recite, what was the word? He said, A'udhu billahi, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. That you seek refuge from Allah. This is something we call ta'awud, something that we recite at the beginning of our Quran. That I seek refuge from Allah, from the akar shaytan, from the akar shaytan. That you seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaytan, from shaytan. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said reciting this is something that can take a person anger away and help a person to overcome and suppress their anger and help a person to become calm. Yes, there are various way, other ways that is mentioned as such for example, the statement that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if you're standing and you become angry, you sit, you change your posture, you change your position. And the main point of that is that you be able to change the situation from what you're in to overcome and to suppress that anger. But nevertheless, one of the best way is that you recite ta'awuz, you seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan the akars. And that is our advice, to, that is my advice to you and I, and the lesson that we taken from this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that let us not become angry, let us look how we can change ourselves, change the situation around us, and be able to suppress our anger so that inshallah we can all become those conscious of servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the muttaqeen and become such servants that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love and become the good doers and not only will this help us in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it will build and help our relations socially among our colleagues among our friends among interaction with any strangers and people around us because then people will not be afraid to, ap to approach us because of our ways of anger in fact, people will love to, become, to come close to us and people will love to speak with us because they know that this is a person of compassion. And this is a quality that we should be able to have. So I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He grant us all patience. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all such patience that we are able to overpower and overcome our anger. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the anger that we may have in our heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can overcome our anger and become from the muhsaneen the good doers that eventually we are those Allah subhanahu we are from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love jazakumullah khair aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh